I think the next video I'm going to do is just me eating bacon, making you feel like you need to go and cure some bacon. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the kitchen. In this video, I'm going to be making some collar bacon for you. That's right, collar bacon. Not a very popular cut, not one that you see much nowadays. We, we all know about streaky bacon and we all know about back bacon, but collar bacon taken from the shoulder, typical cut that would be used for making coppa or capicola, but it's used in this instance for making bacon and that's what we're going to be doing. In the old days you used to be able to get collar bacon in the UK. You don't see it so much nowadays, in fact I can't really say that I've seen it in any of our local butchers for years and years and years. It's a cheaper cut, but in my view it's a better cut because it's a really interesting flavoursome cut of meat. That neck muscle does an awful lot of work in a pig and therefore it gives it lots and lots of flavour, lots of character and lots of colour. Hence why we make a copper with it, which is a beautiful piece of charcuterie. I'll stick some pictures up of a, a typical copper cut so that you can see exactly what it looks like. You've got these wonderful lines of muscle running longitudinally along the loin into the neck and you get um, almost like a, a salami, a really sort of rustic looking kind of salami uh, in terms of its cross section. But it's a beautiful cut of meat. Let me show you how I make it. Here's our ingredients. We have 50 grams of fennel and I've ground that. We have 50 grams of golden caster sugar. We have 6.25 grams of Prague powder number one. And we have 56 grams just over of ordinary salt and that's going to be our curing mix those two things there and these are our flavor and sweetness here brilliant right let's get the meat right. here is our piece of collar so this is a neck cut and it is 2.5 kilos it's got a few scraggy ends on it but i'm going to keep them on there uh, a little bit of fat coverage not a great deal so it's been trimmed but what I want to show you are these striations here. Now, obviously when the salt diffuses into this meat, if it was a solid muscle cut, it would be quite an even penetration. But as there's a lot of intramuscular sinew and a little bit of intramuscular fat as well, it will retard that uh, curing process. So one way of overcoming that is by using a skewer and piercing some holes through this meat and that's just going to aid the curing process and allow that salt to penetrate all the way through this without too much trouble okay now if you don't have a metal skewer like this you can use a a thin spike or if you've got one of these wooden bamboos one of these bamboo skewers you can do exactly the same with that and literally just prick that all the way through like so there we go so that's done now what I'm going to do, obviously we've got all our curing ingredients in front of us here. I'm going to put all the curing ingredients in the bag, mix it all together, and then I'm going to put the meat into the bag and then spread all the curing ingredients around. Now, because this is quite a large piece of meat, I have actually got one of our bags here, which I've pre-made, and it's off a roll, it's off a vacuum roll. So basically I measured the meat put a bit extra on for safety and created a bag. You see I've turned the lip around on the uh, top of the bag so that when we pop the meat in there, it, uh, it doesn't create any sort of uh, smears of fat or anything like that around the lip so that we, uh, we don't have problems sealing it. Right, so first thing I said we're gonna do is get the curing ingredients in the bag. So in goes our Prague powder. Try not to spill 
I mean this is our key ingredient for curing so I've made a bit of a hash of that so I need to get that uh, into the bag so let me yeah we don't want to waste any of that so if you do spill any it's probably worth making sure that you can get it all in the bag all right there's our salt here's our sugar and here's our fennel all nicely ground and we can get that in the bag and get that nicely combined there we go right so there's our curing ingredients and our flavouring ingredients so let's introduce the meat into the bag Okay, don't worry too much if you can't get it completely covered over because this is going to be in the bag for some considerable time. So once the moisture starts to be drawn out of this, it will start to incorporate the moisture with any remaining salt and flavours and it will become ubiquitous throughout the bag. So don't worry too much in the early stages. Right, now we're just going to pop a vacuum on this. So we'll get it right into the bag as far as it will go. We want as much air out of this as possible. Okay, we'll check our seal. I always like to put a secondary seal on just in case. So I shall do that right now. There we go. So have a little bit of a clean down. There we are. So we have a, a double seal on that bag. You can see that. Okay, so here is our collar. Now if you were going to air dry this to make a capicola, once it's cured, then we would truss this up to make a nice round sort of piece of charcuterie and then we'd air dry it. We're going to have this as collar bacon. And um, so we're not going to do that. And that's hence why we use cure one as well. But uh, we're now going to cure this. And because we've, because we've used the EQ method, this equalization brining means that we don't have to worry how long this stays in the fridge, so uh, curing. And that's important because um, as I've explained in my previous videos about curing and EQ curing, you don't, you know, because you're using a very precise measure of salt for this particular cut of meat, you're never going to over cure it. Okay, so whereas in the past perhaps you would have used a measure of its thickness to determine the curing time. For this we're not going to bother, we're just going to stick it in the fridge for 10 days and that should be enough time for the salt to diffuse through the whole of the meat along with the curing salts and a lot of that flavour as well. And because we've aided that curing process by using one of these to pierce the meat it's going to be getting in through all this intramuscular sinew um, and there's not much fat on it so fat normally does inhibit the progress of the cure through the meat but we're not going to get that this is now ready to go into the fridge i'll put today's date on here and then we will get it in the fridge and we'll leave this for 10 days and it is as simple as that Right, we will check it from time to time. I do recommend once it's in the fridge curing that every day you pick it up, you turn it, give it a squidge, make sure that that cure is going everywhere and that's all you need to do. So every day, pick it up, turn it, pick it up, turn it and you'll have some happy bacon in 10 days time. Right, let's get this in the fridge and we'll see it again later. 
So we know how long this bacon's been in the fridge. I'm going to stick the date I'm starting the cure on. Once that's done, it can go straight into the fridge. Right, here we are. Here's our collar bacon. It has been in the fridge for 10 days. And uh, as you can see, we haven't had a great deal of moisture come out of this, but that's a good thing. That indicates that the meat's really good. I'm gonna take it out the bag and I'm going to put it in some meat net. Now, obviously that's quite narrow and uh, to try and get this big lump of meat in there is gonna be a bit of a mission. So before I try and do that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna truss it with some butcher's string. So let's crack on. Least said, soonest mended. We'll get it out of the bag. Trying not to make too much mess. But uh, if you remember, this is our fennel flavoring. And I don't really want to waste any of that. So uh, I'll take a little bit off. It's gonna be very wet, so I'm gonna try and make the least amount of mess possible. Right, so let's tip this out onto the workbench. Here we go. I've got a feeling this is gonna get messy, folks. Now, because we did the EQ brining on this, we don't need to, I take my watch off actually, we don't actually need to rinse this but we're gonna lose some of this anyway. This is our fennel. Ah, oh, the smell is absolutely amazing. So I was gonna smoke this today, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit in the fridge. And then tomorrow, once it's developed a pellicle, I think we'll be good to, uh, we'll be good to get outside and smoke that. Right, so let's just take some of the moisture off here. It's a good slab of meat, this. Absolutely delicious slab of meat. Try and take some of this fennel. Oh, this is gonna make the most amazing bacon. Right, so let me start by trussing this meat. I'm just going to use a, the old standard butcher's knot here. So the knot I'm using is essentially a figure of eight knot on the bite. It's a standard butcher's knot and I use a half hitch to lock it in place. And remember, all we're doing here is we're giving the meat a little bit of shape so that we can get it into the meat net without too much difficulty. And you know, if you're not that confident at tying knots, you could just use one piece of string using half hitches to create your knots along its length. Here we go. Right, now, Meat net is really tricky to get on at the best of times. If you've got a special applicator for putting it on, more the better. Uh, not everyone has that. I don't have one of those applicators. And I'm guessing if you're gonna be using meat net at home, then there's every chance that you're not gonna have one either. So let me show you the technique that I use and it works reasonably well. Let's see if it works today. Is I get a drinks container like this, cut it in half so that I've got something like a, a mandrel to place the meat net on. So basically all I do is I feed the meat net onto it like that. And then what I do is I feed the meat in like that and then feed 
feed this meat there and you have to play with this to get it to go on properly but it will go life a little bit easier and then we can pull a bit more of that meat net over there we are we want it right over the whole piece of bacon like so you want a little bit at the end because you're going to need to tie this so we'll put a little bit of butcher's string on the end goodness me ah oh, there we go right Oh, front door. Hey, I think you better go and answer that, sweetie. Right, let's put this knot on here. We'll just do a quick reef knot. And uh, that should do. Now, so that's going to be the bottom of our bacon. This is going to be the top. And all we do is we pull that off like so. And we have our bacon nicely encased and shaped in the meat net and I'll just cut a length of butcher's string and all we do here is we just tie a reef knot in the end here which is left over right and under right over left and under and then we create a loop here and that allows us to hang it when we come to smoke it. So there we go. That is our collar bacon ready to go into the smoker and before that happens I'm going to pop this in the fridge just to allow it to dry for 24 hours and then we can smoke it for about 24 to 36 hours and we'll cover that process tomorrow. Just taken the collar bacon out of the fridge and you can see it's got that really nice shine on it so it's been drying in the fridge for 24 hours it's holding its shape nicely it's a bit tacky to the touch so that's good that means the smoke's gonna stick to it when we stick it in the cold smoker and uh, to be fair that is the very next job so that's what I'm gonna do right now <music> Okay, this has been in the smoker now for quite a while. And here's our collar bacon. So I'm just gonna let it finish here and then we can take this out and carry on with it. For smoking this collar bacon, I'm using my stacker smoker. If you're interested in building a smoker like this, I've got plans on my website. I'll leave a link in the description. Right, so this has now been smoking for about 20 hours let's have a quick look inside and we can see the artisan pro q smoke generator is finished and the bacon looks a nice color now if you're interested in using one of these uh, smoke generators i'll leave a link in the description so you can have a look at one of my videos which talks about how to use one of these smoke generators effectively in the meantime let's get this inside and we're going to process this a little bit further Here's our collar bacon, fresh out of the cold smoker. Now, I want this to go in the fridge to do a little bit of sort of flavour equalisation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it in this parchment paper, twist the ends. Oh, got another project on the go. That's letting me know what's going on. Can't talk about that right now, but... Uh, so let's wrap this up and get this in the fridge. this on a rack and that will go into the fridge. Lovely. Right, here is our smoked collar bacon. This has now been in the freezer for about 12 hours, just chilling down. 
So, why freeze the bacon, I hear you cry? Well, it's quite simple, really, and it's for one very special reason, and that is fat drag. If ever you've sliced something mechanically that hasn't been frozen, and meat in particular is one great example of that, when you come to slice it, you get a fat drag and it doesn't cut cleanly. If you want to make really nice, accurate slices, then freeze your bacon for about 12 hours before it goes onto the slicer and you'll find that the slices are absolutely crisp and accurate like a professional. And before it gets to the point where I'm going to slice it, I need to take this net off and I'm also going to just remove these strings that I put on here if I can. Right, so. Well, the meat net came off really easily and I was quite surprised by that, even though it was still frozen on the outside. However, the strings were a little bit more problematic. I ended up leaving one or two on because I didn't want to muller the meat too much taking them off. Uh, in hindsight, I think I would have used one piece of string to do this. It would have made the job a lot easier. Okay, we'll leave that. Right, so that is now ready to slice. I'll just pop that back in the freezer for about another half an hour just to recrystallize that outside because I spent a little bit longer playing with that than I anticipated. And then we'll come straight back to that and we'll get it on the slicer. Okay, so here is our bacon, fresh out of the freezer. It's been in for another hour. Just to harden it up and uh, we'll pop it on here and I think uh, I want to angle it so it goes straight and that's not always easy so sometimes sometimes we need to pack it I'm going to use the paper I've got here to act as a means of sort of holding it kind of straight Right, let's get slicing. I'm going to go for around about a three mil slice initially. We'll see how it comes out. So, let's do this. Okay, so those are the slices. Really nice. There you are, if you can see that. That's a beautiful slice of bacon there. I think that's a bit too thick, so we'll just come back a fraction and we'll carry on. Still a bit too thick. That's more like it. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's more like it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Right. So those of you that like Italian coppa, you can see that is what Italian coppa looks like. But this, it's collar bacon. Looks amazing. I'll tell you what, the smell of that fennel is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to carry on slicing this and we'll come back to this at the end. Well, here is the bacon. Look at that. I think you'll agree that looks absolutely stunning. It's just beginning to thaw now, so I'm just going to pop it back in the freezer just to firm it up a bit so that I can I can then get it stuck on some gold silver boards. But I think you'll agree that looks absolutely amazing. I think anyone will want a bacon roll with some of that collar bacon in it. That is amazing. Right, let's get this packed on some gold silver boards. I'd like to present, actually, I like to present the sharp edge because that looks 
really nice when you're giving these away to people if you want to make them look really good then the bit that the, the bit of meat that hit the blade first is usually going to be the best looking piece there we go I'll do the other board and then we'll get those zipped up in some vac bags Always easiest if you put them in the bag, this edge first. Once you get the first in, you're not going to trip up uh, on any of the other pieces of uh, the bacon. And the other thing is, if you put a slight bend in the board like that, they go in without hitting the uh, bag. So that makes a that makes a big difference. So we'll just press those down. Bit of a curve in the bag. And we'll just get those onto vacuum. That's that one done. Get this last one done here. And then what I'll do... So there's two of them done. They look absolutely beautiful. I'll get these popped straight into the freezer. I'll do the rest of these off camera and, um, and we'll come back and have a look at these. I'll leave some out because I said we're going to taste this and I think that's important. So we need to do that. But I want to get this all packed away and frozen. So let me do that. Right, freezer for you. They're all done. We'll get these labeled and stuck in the freezer and uh, they'll be good for a good six to nine months in the freezer but i can guarantee you now they won't last that long if you're in the market for some gold silver food boards we do them on our website coldsmoking.co.uk they're fantastic we do them in retail size packaging and they will make your products look absolutely amazing nice thing about properly cured bacon is that you do not get loads of moisture coming out of it when it cooks. Problem is if you have moisture coming out of your bacon it just shows that it's got too much water in it and it hasn't been cured properly. The other thing is if you've got water running out of your bacon you've also got flavour running out of it as well so to have it properly cured like this you don't see any of that water coming out. You just see a bit of steam evaporating off it. You know you've got yourself a good bit of bacon. That is the collar bacon done. So let's try it. Now, let's take this nice little bit here. It's got a bit of color on it. First of all, the smell. You can smell the smoke on that. And also the fennel as well. Mm, you can definitely taste the fennel and the smoke. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the best bit of the job. <laughs> oh. I don't know why I'm calling it a job. This is delicious. This is amazing. Sorry about this. Mm. Oh. Oh. That's got a really, really, really nice texture. I thought because, you know, collar bacon, it needs quite a lot of cooking. That's why they use it for pulled pork. But actually, it's got a really delicate texture to it. It falls apart. That is really nice. Mm, and that fennel is so aromatic. Sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full. Can't help it. Mmm, oh goodness me. Oh. I think the next video I'm going to do is just me eating bacon, making you feel like you need to go and cure some bacon. Because <laughs> I think that's 
that's the whole point of why I do this. Oh my goodness. Right. You know, I've got to say, one of the things I really like about collar bacon is the fact that you get it, if you hold it in that shape, so you get this nice circular piece of bacon, you can pop that straight into a roll or a bap. And you've got yourself a perfect bacon roll without any bits hanging out the side. So I think uh, that's why it's the perfect bacon to have a go at. Well, oh, well that's all my scrappy bits gone. The rest of it's in the freezer. Oh, mmm. Oh. <laughs> well, that was delicious. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Well, there you go. Collar bacon. I'm calling that one a success. It was an absolute delight to do that. Let us know what you think in the comments. Let me know how yours turned out. And um, hey, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. And uh, the more people that do that, the more people that get to see the video. So thank you very much for watching to the very end. I really do appreciate it. And um, I'll see you guys on the next video. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.